So we make, when we run to the Lord, there's peace in the storm. There's peace in the storm. He calms the storm. This is what happens when we run to the Lord. So going back to Psalm 91, there are seven, there are seven main promises that the Lord gives us in this passage. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list them if you do not notice them. So number one, number one on the list is deliverance. The Lord's literally, can, there's literally that deliverance happens in our closet. There's literally deliverance that happens in my closet, physical and like, I've literally had demons manifest in my closet and I literally got delivered from them, for, like from them in my closet. And I didn't actually know this verse before. There's literally deliverance. I've literally been delivered of demons in my closet. But this is what he says, he who dwells in the secret place. So if you don't dwell in the secret place, none of these benefits apply to you. None of them. And what does dwell mean? It means to live. To live or at a specified place. So like, I used to go to my friend's house, um, my friend's house down the street, um, so often that it, I literally called it my second home away from home. I spent so much time there. This is... This is what our closet should be to us. This is what our secret place should be. Now, that was my secret place of shame for a time where I'd go smoke weed and just hang out with my friends. That was my home away from home. That was where my parents away from home. That's how it should be. So if you don't dwell in the secret place, if you don't live in the secret place, then these don't apply to you. So I'm sorry, I'm about to make some of y'all jealous if you don't live in the secret place. And this is what he says. So... There's deliverance that happens. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And again, what is a fowler? One who catches birds in a trap. And from the pestil and the perilous pestilence. So there's literally deliverance that happens. There's, there's literally deliverance that happens. And he's going to deliver you from the evil one. He's going to deliver you from the wiles of the devil. That's all I need. To be honest, if that was the only benefit, I would be running to the closet. If I even... I mean, we should already be going to the closet with the Father. If the Father's there, I'm running to it. But there's rewards? Rewards openly in our life? Oh, Lord. You've given us too much, Lord. Thank you for the much that you've given me, Lord. In Jesus' name. All right, this is what John 15, 5 says. So, unless we... Uh, so, like... We can only do these things if we abide and dwell in the place, in the, in the secret place, wherever this may be. If you shut the door, this is, if you, okay, so I'm going to say this right now. If you feel disconnected from God, if you feel like there's something missing in your relationship with the Father, this is what is missing. The secret place, this is where God is. When I don't go into the secret place, I feel disconnected from God. It's a, it's a literal feeling I have. And I don't work. I don't work. It's like when you unplug the fridge, then everything else inside goes rotten. Oh my God, that was a revelation on the spot. Thank you, Jesus. Everything else on the inside goes rotten. Your milk starts curdling. Everything else starts rotting. But when we plug it back in, everything else is good for eating and devouring. Others, other people can take what you have on, in, on the inside and eat it. But we have to keep the plug in. And this is what the secret place is. Thank the Lord. This is what the secret place is. <laughs> this is what the secret place is. This is what John 15, five says. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I am, thank the Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. So without the plug into the wall, we can do nothing. If we don't abide in the secret place, we can literally do nothing. You'll be like a beanbag. You'll, you'll literally just sit there. And wait for other people to sit on you. You'll be nothing. The devil is just going to come and sit on you. But when you get plugged in, you start vibrating and you start actually be getting, you, you start being good for good use, for good works. So we have to abide into the vine. We are the branches. So there's literally deliverance that happens. In John 8, 38, it says, he who the son sets free is free indeed. He delivers from the fowler. Number two. Number two, he says that I will set you on high. 
He says, I will set you on high. And why would he set us on high? He set Jesus on high. Do you know why he set Jesus on high? Because he knew the Father and he never sinned. The secret place delivers us from these things. When we go to the secret place, this is how we get away from the devil. Um, he says, I will set him on high because he has known my name. Because he has known me. I will set him on high. I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. This is what it says in Psalm 91 as well. It says, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. So he's, he's going to put you above the devil. He describes the devil as serpents and scorpions. And he's going to put you against the, above the serpent. He's going to put you in high heavenly places. And if you don't know... If you didn't read it, he says, he describes, it describes God as a bird. It says, you will abide under the shadow of the Almighty and he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings, he shall take you refuge. And if you don't know, do you know how, do you know how hawks kill snakes? Do you know what they do? They actually grab the snakes and then they actually lift them up and then they're out of the territory and, the, and then they can't fight. They fight from their own territory. That's why when alligators as well, that's why when alligators as well, they grab their animals and then they take them into our territory. So when we fight the devil from the secret place, when we fight the devil from on high where Jesus has sat us, because Jesus rose from the dead, we have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So if Christ lives in me, then I am in the same position that he is. Because he died, I died. I died. It is no longer I who live. So when he died, I died. And when he rose, I rose. And now I'm a new creation. So we have to, when we, it says that the, okay, so I'm going to slow down. Sorry. It says, he shall cover you with his feathers and his wings. You shall take refuge. So he's going to take the snake and he's going to take it out of it. And he's going to raise us up. He's going to take us up with his feathers. And this is what um, Luke 10, 18 through 20 says. So we're going to, he's going to put us above the devil. We're going to be in a position above the devil and it's where he's only going to be good for trampling on. So we keep trying to, f we, we keep fighting the devil like we are defeated already. But when we have been, when we dwell in the secret place, we actually dwell above him. We have been set on high by the Lord, by the Lord, our, the God who made everything. We are warriors. The young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. So it literally says that you will literally, they will be under your feet. Because you are just in the secret place, being with the Father. This is how we conquer the devil. This is what Luke 8, through, uh, I apologize. Let me find it. Luke 10, 18 through 20. And this is just to back up what I'm saying. And I saw Satan fall like lightning. So he took God in his imagery is like a bird with feathers and he covers us in his feathers and he takes up the, and then he drops Satan. He drops Satan and Satan is the serpent. He is the serpent. Behold, I will give you authority. This is Jesus's words. And this is, he's given this to us and nothing can take this away from us. You can, you are the only one that can actually take this away from yourself. The devil cannot take it away. Nothing can separate you except you. Behold, I will give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All power over the enemy. If we dwell in the secret place. And nothing sh by any means shall hurt you. But this is what he says after that. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And he's talking about casting out demons. So literally, we have, we have been given power on high. On high from God. We have been seated in heavenly places by the Lord. In Genesis 3.15, it says that he shall bruise your head. And he's talking to the serpent in the beginning. He says, he shall bruise your head. And he's talking about Jesus. Literally, Jesus is prophesied from the very beginning. He's, he's talking about a man. He's, he's prophesying about a man that shall rise up. And he says that he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So from the very beginning, the Lord says that you're going to get your head trampled on. 
And Lord, the Lord says that in John um, 20, 21, it says that as the Father has sent me, I also send you. So if Jesus is set on high, so are we, because we are one with Christ. If this is what it says in Ephesians 2, 6. And raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So because we have, so backtrack, verse 5, it says, Even when we were dead and trespasses made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. And raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ. So it says that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And we are literally seated with Christ. I want you to think about that. We have been, we have been given power from on high and we can be given this power and this authority in the secret place this is where we go to get this power and to seek god and it says these signs will follow the believer so when we go to the secret place and we seek the father with and we seek his face psalm 27 the david said seek my face that's what the lord said to david and what does david how does david do that he goes into the secret place in psalm 91 so if we go into the secret place we are going with faith that we are seeking the face of God and all of these things will come. And it says in 2 Corinthians, I believe it says this in 2 Corinthians 2.11, to my memory. But the devil, again, he's going to try to take you out of the secret place. He's going to try to take you out of the secret place. 2 Corinthians um, 2.11 says, Lest Satan take advantage of us, so we are not ignorant of his devices. So Adam and Eve were ignorant of the devil's devices, and God removed their hedge from them. God removed their hedge from them. Number three, I will answer him. It says that whenever we call God, he will, he will answer us. It literally says this. It says, I will answer him. We all have that friend. I have that friend. I have that friend too. That we call and they never answer. They never answer the phone. And we have to call them over and over again. We have to call them over and over again. But he says that when you're in the secret place, when you call to him, he will answer you. He will answer you. He will call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. So it says whenever we call God, he will answer you. He says, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him, I will trust. So he says that whenever we call him, he will answer right away and he will be right there for us. Again, after again, these rewards become better and better and better. I'm, I'm probably making somebody jealous watching this video about the the... I hope somebody has a craving for the, the secret place right now. I have a craving for the secret place. Number five, he, I will deliver him and honor him. So he just got done saying that whenever you call him, he's going to answer right away. If anything, he's actually going to call you before you actually call him. I will deliver him and honor him. Have you ever been recognized by somebody? A peer, a parent? honor you, giving respect to you. Good job. I'm proud of you. But God will literally honor us. He says, I will deliver him and honor him. He will deliver you from the fowler and he will honor you. God will honor what you do in the secret place. I want to be honored by God. I want to be honored by God openly. That's my desire. I want to seek the Lord. I want to seek the Lord and these things will come. Number six, it says that he will literally grant you a long life. And it says, with long life, I will, I will satisfy him. It says, not only will he give us a long life, but he will also satisfy us. He will satisfy us. He will satisfy us. That's why in Haggai 1.6, it says, this is what it says. And if you don't know where that is, that's um, later in the Old Testament. Hold on, I'm flipping to it. <laughs> Most people don't even know this is a book of the Bible. 
I recently did not know. That means I should probably read my Bible more. Thank you, Jesus. All right, and this is what it says. It says, so you have sown much and bring in little. You will eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You caught, you clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. So he's saying that you will never be satisfied. You will be clothed, but you will be cold. No one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into bags with holes. So he's saying that like, whatever you earn will have holes in it and you will never be satisfied fully. John 63, five says, and Jesus says, I am the bread of life and he who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So when we abide in the secret place, it literally says that we will, he will give us a longer life and we will be satisfied in him. We will be satisfied in the Lord if we go into the secret place. Lord, help me. Lord, bring me to, bring me to the secret place, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Matthew 5, 6, this is what it says. Help me, Jesus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. For they shall be filled. So when we have God and we're in the secret place, we shall be filled. We shall be satisfied by God. We shall be satisfied by God. That's why athletes often, you can see them. And a lot of times that I'll hear about an athlete that's, one of, the, one of the worst days of their life was when they won the Super Bowl and they realized that it wouldn't satisfy them. Why do you think athletes not only, well, winning championships is fun, but why do you think they have to keep winning them over and over and over and over again? They're not satisfied with one. That's why Kobe had to actually go win a Grammy as well because he wasn't satisfied with what he had. But when we have the Lord, we're satisfied. That's why when Job lost everything, and his parents and his mom told him to curse God. Not his parents, but his friends and his brothers and his, his wife told him to curse God. He says, naked I came into the world and naked I will leave it. So when we have God, we actually have everything that we need. When we have God, we have everything that we need. When we have God, we have everything that we need. He will satisfy us and he will literally, we will literally live a longer life. Praise the Lord for a longer life. Although I love, I would love to go be with Jesus, but. <laughs> Number seven is salvation. And he says, and I will show him my salvation. I will show him my power. Salvation means um, deliverance, power. Salvation is power. So when we go to the secret place, we seek this great salvation. We seek the Father in the secret place. And all of these things, all of these things come with it. If you're not jealous for the secret place, then I don't, I don't know what else, to, what else to tell you. He says, I will show him my salvation. All of these things. And number eight is actually silence. I've learned a lot of discipline through this. I've learned a lot of discipline through this. When we go into the secret place, we have to learn how to be disciplined. We have to learn how to be silent. In Psalm 95, verse 7, it says, Today, if you will hear his voice, it's an option. Hearing his voice is an option. It's a, we have to be willing to want to hear his voice. Just like when someone tries to speak to you and you don't actually feel like speaking to them and you just ignore them, we have to be willing to hear the Lord. We have to be willing to hear him and be in silence and focus on him. That's why he says shut the door because we have to be focused on the father. That's why when somebody is trying to speak to you and they're on their phone or you're trying to talk to somebody on their phone and you're like eating at a restaurant and they're on their phone, you're like, dude, you're not even listening to me. This is how the Lord feels. Zechariah 7.13 says, therefore it happened and just as he proclaimed, um, hold on, let me turn to that. Actually. And 
I need to read the Old Testament. This is some good stuff. I'm working on it, I promise. Um, this is what uh, Zechariah 7.13 says, Therefore it happened that just as he proclaimed in that he, uh, they would not hear, so the people would, would not listen to the Lord. It's an option. It's an ability that we have. So they called out and I would not listen, says the Lord of hosts. So because they didn't listen, the Lord would also not listen. And this, is, this might be why some of our prayers are not being answered because we're not listening to him, so he's not listening to us. We have to be dwelling in the secret place. John 10, 37 says, my sheep hear my voice and they know, and I know them and they follow me. So where do we hear the voice of God? In the secret place. And it's that simple. That's why that secret place is so important. And it's why the Lord wished for me to preach on this today. We have to be getting in the secret place. We have to be getting in the secret place. It's my refuge. If you make the Lord your refuge, all of these things, all... You will you literally, I mean, it'll transform your life. It'll transform your prayer life. I promise you, sometimes, literally, I'll, I'll go into the, like, do you know when you're having fun and, like, time flies and you're like, whoa, like, it's been five hours? Well, when we go into the secret place, prayer does, isn't boring anymore because we know the Lord's in there. I know the Lord's in there when I go in there. So I'm excited to go into there because I know the Lord's there. And one, two hours will go by without me even realizing it because I'm just talking with the Father and I'm just praying with Him and I'm talking to Him and I'm spending time with Him. And it's fun. I enjoy spending time with the Father. He's the one who literally created me. We have to be going to the secret place. I hope I made someone je jealous for the secret place today. Lord, I pray. Um, and that's, that's all I got to say today. Please like and subscribe and um, continue to follow our, our content. Please share, like the video. It, um, it triggers the algorithm and it gets our video to other people. So I pray, um, or I, well, I don't pray. I pray to the Father. I'm not praying to you, but um, I'm just asking you, please share the video. Please share it um, and leave a comment if you have any prayer requests or any questions like that. I plea, um, I hope you learned something today and I hope the Holy Spirit is moving in your life um, in a mighty way. Um, so I'm going to actually pray for everybody. Lord, I pray that you would just... Um, Fill them, Lord. I pray that you would just bless them, Lord. I pray that they would just have a longing and a dwelling in the secret place, Lord. I pray that you would just pull on their shirt, tug on their shirt, just like you've put tugged on my on my shirt many times before, Lord. I pray that there would be a wooing and a and a longing for the secret place and the things of God, Lord. I pray that you would um, not just take us higher into the things of God, but Lord, I pray that you would just take us deeper, Lord. I pray that um, all of these things in your word would remain. Oh, I don't have to ask for them to remain true, but Lord, I pray. Um, that you would just, we would receive all these things. And Lord, I pray that we would just all receive this message, Lord. I'm not only preaching to them, but Lord, I'm preaching to myself. Lord, I need to be in the secret place, Lord. Um, Lord, I pray that you would just touch those who are not believing, unbelievers, Lord. And I pray that they would just seek you, Lord. I pray that you would just bring everybody listening closer to you, Lord, um, through the secret place, Lord. And I pray that we would just, um, just walk in the spirit, Lord. And I pray that we would hear your voice. And I pray all of these things in Jesus' name, amen. Um, I hope you have a great day. I have to go. Uh, my mom has to have some help with the bed. So um, <laughs> I love y'all and uh, praise the Lord. <laughs>